British forces are currently taking part in Operation Prosperity Guardian, a multinational force targeting Houthi rebels in Yemen to safeguard commercial shipping in the Red Sea. And some 20,000 British troops are set to take part in exercise Steadfast Defender 2024, NATO's biggest drills since the Cold War. Our carrier strike group will be out in full force with our magnificent flagship HMS Queen Elizabeth leading the way. And flying from her decks will be the fifth generation F-35 Lightning Jets. But critics argue that behind that veneer, Britain's armed forces are underfunded, under-equipped and facing a recruitment crisis. On a visit to London last month, the US Navy Secretary Carlos del Toro said Britain should reassess the size of its armed forces, given threats from Russia and China and the conflict in the Middle East. He urged other European allies to do the same. Meanwhile, General Patrick Sanders, the outgoing head of the British Army, warned recently that more needs to be done to equip and modernise the country's armed forces. Britain's army has around 73,000 soldiers, half the size it was 30 years ago. Numbers are pretty important. For example, a tank or a frigate or an F-35 can't be in two, place, two places at once. Um, it's also fair to say that the British Armed Forces have a broad range of capabilities, which I think the US welcomes, but many of those are themselves very small. For example, there are, the British Army can only produce a single division. The French Army can produce two, the Germans can produce three. The British Army, Navy and Air Force have all missed recruitment targets. Two British naval frigates are set to be decommissioned this year, owing to a lack of crew able to operate them, reducing the total to nine, according to a report by the London Daily Telegraph. The government did not comment on the report, but highlights that it has ordered eight new frigates, although these won't be in service until at least the end of the decade. Government figures show there are shortages of ammunition and spare parts across the armed forces. What we've seen over the last couple of years is the relative hollowing out of Europe's armed forces, uh, very publicly displayed with the um, well-reported difficulties of supplying enough equipment, weapons and ammunition for Ukraine. The British government has pledged to spend 2.5% of GDP on defence by 2030 and said it was committed to spending more, quote, 